Today on James's Hobby Desk, I'm painting the Void Warden from Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Welcome to James's Hobby Desk. And today on the desk, I have the figures from Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and I'm starting with the Void Warden. Uh, Jaws of the Lion's given us four really nice character models, uh, definitely good quality for ball game plastics, so I'm looking forward to painting these. To start with, I've applied a prime first with Citadel's Mechanica Standard Grey, and then a Xenophil highlight of Corax White, which really helps in picking out the details and showing those areas which will get highlighting later. Unfortunately, the other thing that's really showing up is a couple of mould lines that I missed before highlighting. Putting a layer of paint really does emphasise mould lines and it only gets worse, so I'm just tidying these up at this stage so that they don't spoil the look of the figure when it's actually finished. A little bit of attention with the sharp hobby knife and I should get all of these cleaned up nicely. With the mould lines removed, let's pop her onto a painting handle and get started. The most dominant colour area on the model is the grey robes. So for those, I'm using a base of Citadel's Celestra Grey, just thin down a little on my wet palette, and I'm applying those all over the cloth areas, uh, not worrying too much about neatness. In particular, there's a lot of uh, moulded detail, which would be sort of embroidery and patterning on the cloth, which I'm just getting a nice even layer all over to get that in. Next up I'm adding some black to the Celestra Grey and just using this to fill in all the inner areas that would uh, be sort of inside and underneath of the fabric in a nice dark grey. You probably just use Mechanica Standard Grey for this combined paints because I had them out. So switching for the metallic areas of armour and going for a different brush just to uh, preserve the bristles because uh, the metallic particles are harsh on good brushes and so starting with Citadel's Retributor armour and I go through and apply this to both the shoulder pauldrons, the, I guess it's a tacit, the piece of armour on her uh, sort of up, upper right leg, and the uh, leg pieces, the, uh, the greaves on uh, both legs, so front of the left leg, back of the rear leg, but leaving the feet themselves. For the other areas, I'm using warp block bronze, which is a nice sort of brown metallic shade. Uh, with this, I uh, get the uh, left side uh, tacit, the uh, left left thigh armor so to speak and a bit of detail on the right hand side just up at the top near the belt there and I just a uh, littlest bit where the strap running across her chest meets the uh, right shoulder pauldron as well as that I pick out the orb on the top of her staff in this color as well. Okay, let's tweak the camera position slightly 
and we'll go back to our celestial gray and tidy up a couple of little details around those armor panels and just where I was applying the dark gray as well earlier. Next up, I'm taking some Cajun Flesh Tone and just applying this at the moment all over the face and neck, uh, uh, including co covering up the eyes entirely in the base tone and as well as that, picking out the right hand clutching her staff. And I managed to get a splodge of the flesh tone on the book there, but it's somewhere we're going to clean up later, so not too worried about that. Okay, so now I've got a bit of Reichlin flesh shade. And just using my dry palette to control the amount on the brush and applying that to all of those areas that I painted with Cajun Flesh Tone on the face and the right hand. It's washed, so it didn't need any watering down at all, but uh, didn't want to have too much on my brush. For the sashes, I decided to go with Uriel Yellow from Citadel. However, I quickly decide that the colour is just too thin to get a decent coverage over the grey up the LED. Uh, it's just looking too washed out. So, having started, we'll then stop that and go and can just about see on the camera it's not looking great so get some corex white and go over the areas that i want to be nice and bright yellow with the white just so that there is that clean base coat underneath so this is the sashes two at the front and one at the back with the white on they come out a nice bright vibrant yellow so for the belt straps pouches and the cover of her book i'm using mournfang brown it's just a nice warm colored brown uh, i'm sticking with the size one brush because it's got a good body to the brush so it's holding the paint well and delivering to the point reasonably neatly and easily rather than using a smaller brush so. for the cover of the book because i haven't painted the hand on this side yet i'm happy to go over the fingers and tidy those up later and it's a case of making sure that edges of the uh, covers are picked out spine and all of that On the back of her belt here it's got a potion of some sort so i'm picking this out using citadel's mephiston red just to provide a nice bright accent color red is traditional color for healing potions isn't it so just to fill that in there nicely again 
applied the paint to my wet palette to thin it slightly just for better handling of it and I'm going to use this same bright red for the pages of the book uh, quite often medieval books would have uh, painted or uh, written on uh, pages so that they could be identified if they were stored spine in locked on a shelf and again a nice touch of color so for her staff i'm using plate mail metal from the army painter this is a sort of dark silver base coat that I'll be able to highlight up a little later. Uh, off camera, I also picked out her shoes in the same Montfang brown as uh, I used for the leather straps of the book. The Void Warden wouldn't be the Void Warden if she hadn't been touched by the Void, which has uh, blackened the left half of her body. So for this effect, I'm using a little bit of what's left of my old Chardon Granite Citadel colour, which uh, is a complex grey with sort of brown and green in it that's not really replicated in the current range. Skaven Bike Dinge is the official closest, but it's not exactly there. And with this, I'm going to uh, carefully pick out her left hand, making sure that I don't get any onto her book at this point. And just taking that down the bare section of the arm to where it meets the cloth. And then uh, on the left side of her face for that uh, two face look and picking that out with just sort of a softish edge um, along the center line of her face. For her blonde hair, I'm using Desert Yellow from Cote d'Arms. This is a thinner paint than most Citadel or Army painters, so I'm happy to use this one straight out of the pot, just being careful about how much I have on my brush. Um, unfortunately, the recording cuts out after this, but I apply a wash of Seraphim Sepia over the hair just to pick out some detail and color variation and then on just the left hand side I apply a wash of null oil to uh, darken the hair and provide a, a contrast on the side that has been touched by the void. Unfortunately, the camera cut out for a sec here, but to catch up on what I've done, the cloth has been highlighted with Ufwan Grey and an edge highlight with White Scar, which has just moved it much closer to white than to the grey we started off with. 
um, the embroidered detail on the cloth has been uh, carefully filled in with eschen grey just require being patient and thinning the paint carefully and I've just uh, applied a touch of the Ufo on grey there tidying up some of the lines the model's eyes were done in ivory and then the pupils dotted in I think I used the ashen grey for that as well but possibly pure black the gold was highlighted uh, with liberator gold from citadel and I used that to pick out the details on the book as well as the corner protectors and the uh, detail on the cover the let's see Ah, yes, so I'm just uh, coming in with some Wild Rider Red here to the pages of the book and the potion bottle. And that more or less covers everything, I think. So. For the bases, I want all the models to be based matching their character token colours. For the Void Warden, this is an off-white, so I'm now tidying the base up with two thin coats of Celestra Grey, which I then highlight with a slightly off-centre highlight, first of Uvon Grey, then a little white scar. With the last of the highlights applied to the base of the miniature, I'm just going to finish it off by uh, putting a sharp black line around the base rim, which will really help make the figure stand out from the board and generally tidies up the finish. With that done, the Void Warden will be ready to face foes on the road to Gloomhaven in Jaws of the Lion. Come back next time when I'll be painting more of these figures. See you soon. Thank you for watching James's Hobby Desk. If you've liked this video, please tick the like button and subscribe for more videos coming soon.